Well, good morning, good morning to you. Welcome to Stoker Genius Podcast Survivor Experience. I'm your host, CEO, founder of Stoke TV Media, and host of this podcast, Stoker Genius um, Podcast Survivor Experience, Aaron Avila. You know, we're doing something a little different today. What I've got for you is guest who I've been trying to get my podcast, wanted to get my podcast for quite some time. His name is Bill Wade. You know, when you ask a survivor or a stroke survivor, how many times have you had brain surgery? And he says, I lost track. Well, you're about to meet the man who lost track. Had so many brain surgeries, he lost track of how many he actually had. So we're going to get into it. I'm really looking forward to this. So today, Bill Wade, right now, is in the audience. I can see him right there. Here he is, right here in the audience. And what this is, is a pre-recorded podcast. But him, Bill Wade, and myself are going to be in the chat talking to you. I'll be pulling myself off screen. So if you have a, a question for Bill, a question for me or whatever, feel free to put in the chat. And we'll come back with you right away. But let's get right into it. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to play a commercial I made. I really have not played a lot of that, but I want you to see this hit before I start. So here we go. Pretty good. I love that commercial. Okay, let's get to it. It is. Welcome to the Stroke of Genius Podcast of my best friends. I'm your host, Aaron Amla. I get a real special guest for you today. I've been wanting to get him on my podcast for a long time now. I'm so thrilled to have him on my uh, podcast today. His name is Bill Wade. He survived a, a massive stroke and multiple, multiple uh, brain surgeries, which you will see they had to actually remove a part of his skull. So let's bring him on camera right now. And we'll talk to Bill and get a story and see what you got to be amazing story. So let me uh, pull this up right now. His name is Bill Wade. Here he comes. Welcome to Stroke of Genius Podcast Survivor Experience, where I believe mindset is the foundation of your recovery. I'm your host, Aaron Avila, a 13 year post survivor of a brain aneurysm and stroke. Join me now as I share survivor stories of resilience and triumph from around the globe. So without further ado, let's get to it. There he is. The guy, you know, all I want to get my show for a long time. Thank you for being here. So Bill Wade, please introduce yourself, bro. Yes, my name is Bill Wade. I had a stroke, a massive stroke in November 2014. Now, 2014, how how old were you when you stroke? I uh, see, I would have been uh, 54. Wow, all right. So everybody, I wanted to make note, note of this. I'm not, I, Bill has half, his, and we'll get into this a little bit, but he, his, his skull had an infection. They actually had to remove a flap of his skull. We'll get into that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but Bill, did you any like get right into it, can we? Did you have any warning signs before you stroke? No, I I don't believe I had any warning signs whatsoever. I I went to work that day. Everything was fine. I felt normal all day long. And I went to bed at around I think it was around midnight, 
and I think I might have fell asleep for a little while. And my wife got up a little later and to use the bathroom and I, I it woke me up and I told myself, it's like, when she gets out of the bathroom, I'm gonna go ahead and use the bathroom myself so I don't wake up later and have to use it. So she came out of the bathroom and I got out of bed and I went to take a step and I couldn't walk and I fell on the floor. And that's when my wife called 911. And I was fighting my wife because I had to urinate so bad. I said, I need to get in there and, and pee. And she said, no, you need to stay right here. The <clears throat> ambulance is on the way. But that was really amazing. So your wife said, call 911. You were asleep. It's so strange. You woke up. And then I just so you, yeah. you had to sleep while you were sleeping because you actually woke up. I was yeah. a survivor. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sure it started when I was sleeping. And then, like I said, I got out of bed and I went to walk to the bathroom. And I went to take that stuff with that left foot and it wouldn't move. So I just I just fell on the floor. The will be I'm curious. Did they know why you had the stroke? Why did you have the stroke? Was it what type of stroke was it? It was an isochemic stroke. My my right cortoid cortoid artery was hundred percent blocked. Wow. So so I'm curious then, Bill. You let to be live about why you're missing part of your skull. Why tell me why you're missing part of your skull? Oh, from the stroke, I had increased pressure on my brain stem, so they had to do a craniotomy. So they took the right skull flap out and they, they stored it in a medical refrigerator with the intention of putting it back in approximately six months later. So after I got out of the hospital, they sent me to a rehabilitation center where I was getting therapy. And then about six months after they took it out, they sent me back to the hospital to get my skull flap put back in. So they put it back in and I went back to the rehabilitation center. And then uh, eventually I made it home and then my wife noticed it looked like there were some abscesses on my head, a couple, there's either one or two abscesses on my head. So she said that didn't look right. So she drove me down to uh, Henry Ford Main Hospital in downtown Detroit and got an appointment with the neurosurgeon. And he looked at it right away. He said, we need to admit you to the hospital right away. So they did and they went and did a brain surgery and they found out my skull flap was infected. Oh my God. And uh, so they had to take it out permanently since it was infected. And then they found some other pieces of my skull on top of my head were infected. They had to take pieces of those out. And then, uh, and so, because I didn't have that skull flap, they put in the titanium plates and screws to, you know, to protect my brain on that side. And then not long after that, they, uh, I started getting uh, build up of uh, infect infected fluid in my head where it, it even started to squirt down the front of my forehead. That fluid did because it built up so high. And then they they found out I had a massive infection in there because my body rejected that, that titanium plate and screws. So they had to take all that out. And then they tried putting a prosthetic skull flap in there which I, I don't know, I guess it's just hard plastic. And of course, my body rejected that also. My body didn't like anything foreign in, the, in it. So so that's why it's, my skull flaps permanently. I got nothing to replace it, which is okay. I don't have to wear a helmet or anything. But, you know, I just got to be, I just got to protect that side, make sure nothing hits that side of my head. 
Right, right. So I'm curious, yeah. honey, if let's talk about your deficits. I see your left side def you have deficits on the left side. Yeah. I'll, can I'll, can I'll, you do you walk? No, I no no I'm paralyzed on my left side. I'm 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 in a wheelchair. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But now people people you know you're in a uh, a treatment facility, correct? Well, I'm in an assisted living facility right now, but I'm still getting therapy. Which is great, which is really good. So I'm glad you're getting therapy. So yeah. but tell me how you feel. How do you how do you feel about you you happy to be alive, I'm assuming? Oh yeah, I'm happy to be alive. I, I feel pretty good. I, I've never been depressed or anything. I just I just continue to work hard. Uh, uh, my number one goal is to walk again. Me too. Mm -hmm. I know that's, that. that's the number one thing. I also have, a, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's called a myoco for the arm. What's it called? It's called, uh, it's made, the company's name is Myomo and the, uh, it's a, it's a mechanical arm. It's called My Own Pro. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But I'll talk to you later about You can look into it. And, okay. uh, and Medicare pays for it now. Yeah. I've heard about it. I, I, I know My Pro. I, I have the... I have not time to pursue them, but I will, I will do that. But I'm curious now. I mean... You're you're in assisted living. How do you maintain it? I'm I'm extremely. I've told you before. I'm extremely thankful for your interactions in second chance stroke survivors, my stroke support group, and stroke TV media. I want to say thank you very right publicly. I want to say thank you for being involved. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy watching your content. I especially like it when I, I watch you when you walk because you got the same deficits I do. You, you know, your same size is affected as mine, so I like to watch you walk because I try to learn something every time I watch you walk. Yeah, well, that's really great. I'm I really need to do that because I've been walked on that real with that real for I must say a month or two. Because it's you know I give all the kind of excuses I can give it, but let's just face it, I'm just myself to do it. I've been letting that things take over. But I'm curious, but how do you maintain a positive attitude going through what you've gone through? How do you maintain a positive attitude? Well, I, I've I've watched your mindset videos. So I know it's all about, uh, you know, how you how you think about things. So, I, you know, I concentrate on keeping the right mindset. And I just know I'm going to walk again before I die. I have no yeah. doubt that's going to happen. You and I have had this conversation because I've been in wheelchair going on 14 years now. Yes. But I'm with you, bro. I'm gonna walk against it. Yeah, I know I am. And I think I just know it. What? I think it's gonna be come down to our attitude. Our attitude is gonna make us, we're gonna walk against it. Yeah, it's all about attitude and mindset. I tell myself. And I, I try to visualize it because because I do get therapy, the therapist every time I all I get therapy uh, twice a week but actually I officially only get uh, our physical therapy once a week but the therapist is a really nice guy he lives close by me he comes on his own time no once a, every Sunday morning and gives me bedside therapy where he works my left leg and stuff and tries to get me to move it in different directions so he's doing it on his own time so, well, Bill, I gotta tell you, I just just before doing this podcast, 
I, and the weird lady named Kate, who had a brainstem stroke, totally locked in, Kate was totally paralyzed, 99.9% paralyzed. She can move yeah. her eyes. Yeah. She's helped me start out with a twitch. Yeah. And she, you would never know. She's like moving everything. Now she walks. It's amazing, bro. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send you a copy of that. Podcast I'm done with them, but of course, now you know, mindset. Let's talk about mindset. Yeah, you and I cannot help what I'm doing, but no stroke survivor, brain injury survivor, trauma survivor can help what happens to them, but they can have to, they can control how they respond. Yeah, you know, and I'm really glad to hear that. You know, Stoke TV and what I'm doing, this podcast, really is helping you because I appreciate it. It's a two way street. I appreciate you do too, bro. Yeah. Now, what do you do? You listen to a lot of uh, our content on Stoke TV media to keep you motivated. What else to do to keep you motivated? I, uh, it's just a living facility. They have uh, activities, different activities going on. And a lot of times I do uh, exercises in the morning. So I, I, I do that. And I try to visualize myself walking out in the hallway because they got one of those, uh, you know, rails on both sides of the hallway. So I get out there and I try to visualize myself walking. You know, I've heard I use visualization the second time you brought it up. That's so important. I want to encourage you to keep doing that. I want to encourage everybody out there. If you can see in your mind, you can hold yeah. your hand, they say. If you see in your mind, you can hold your hand. So if you can keep visualizing that, you will do it. The more right. the mind goes, body will follow. Right. Yeah, I agree. Goes so I'm curious. Then what state are you in, Mel? What state? I'm in, I'm in Michigan. You're Michigan. Yeah. I'm curious, what did you do for a living before your stroke? I I was called a simulator specialist, which a simulator is like an exact repli replica of a nuclear power plant control room, and uh, I maintain the simulator, which I maintain the hardware. You know, the recorders, gauges, stuff like that, and also maintain the software, which simulated, you know, the software behind it that would simulate pumps and valves and stuff like that, and plant. So I maintain, I did the hardware and the software. I did both. No, I can't cure us, and I appreciate sharing that. It's pretty impressive. I you know, to be that. But, you know, when you sit there and watch your life change, go from doing what you're doing, being, yeah. you know, simulator manager, and then the stroke survivors, and then have half your skull taken off and yeah. with all the trauma. I mean, it's pretty, it's a very rough road to hope, but yeah. you still yeah. seem like you seem, seem like you have a good attitude about it. Yeah, I do. Let me back up a little bit, too. He was asking me if I had any uh, symptoms, and I said, no, I didn't have any symptoms. But my wife said I complained a couple of days before that about how my neck was hurting. But, uh -huh. uh, um, yeah. but I had been doing a lot of uh, software work on my computer, and I'd had that problem in the past where I, I, my posture wasn't very good when I was work, when I worked on a computer and uh, my neck would get sore because of my posture so I don't I didn't so when she said I complained about my neck being sore you know I just I just chalked that up to uh, uh, probably my posture working on the computer so much you know Bill I've interviewed Lots and lots of people and taught many church survivors over the, the nine plus years I've been doing this. I'd say every one of them, I don't know anyone that 
said, oh, I had a warning sign, so I went to the hospital. I had a headache, had a neck ache, had my left arm go, kind of tingling numb. All of them wrote it all, never listen to the body. So, you know, I'm really hoping that this podcast, if you sense anything out there, person, if you're out there and you sense something, body is... Don't chuck it up to like normal pain. Just go get checked out because you might be yeah. on the side of the store. Yeah, I just don't know if it, if, if, if if even if it, you know even if I would have went to go get my checked out and say my neck was sore, I just yeah. I, 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 I don't think that I don't think that would have clued them in to. Uh, doing an ultrasound of my neck and saying the art- artery was almost fully clogged. Yeah, I would say probably if they did the uh, the of that sonar thing, they could put your neck artery in. Yeah. Check it. And, you know, for me, for me, Bill, it was like I had headaches that I've never, the worst headaches that I've ever had in my life. And I had those about, no, oh, I said two, two weeks prior to my brain injury. Oh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you had some warning signs there. Yeah, I, 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 I never had any headaches. And I tried, I, like you said, I just, I went, the, I went to the ER four times. Yeah. All four times set me up with my game medication. Right. But if you're, now you, you're okay, you're, you're separate, you're not, you're still married. Do you have any yeah. kids? Do you have kids? Yeah, I got two adult children. One of them's a, uh, they both live outside the house, though. One's married and has three children of her own, so I got three grandkids. Oh, wow. So great. So that's really great. So you, you have reason to keep wanting to get better. And oh, we yeah, just, We were just talking about that girl I was talking about. Uh, Kate, I was just talking about get, find that one thing that gets you fired up and motivated to get better and focus on that. Yes. Because there's so many times struggle lies to us and gets us to focus on what we can't do. Right. And not focus on what we can do. So tell me a little bit about your therapy there. What do you do for therapy? Uh, it's a physical therapy. The therapist works out my left leg, tries to get me to move it different ways. And then he, he goes out in the hallway and he walks me to the length of this rail twice. And then uh, and then he comes back and has me stand up for a certain period of time twice. And we keep increasing that by 10 seconds every every other time or something. So I'm up to like 160 seconds. Yeah, I think it's really important everybody do your therapy, whatever it is. I don't care if it's a finger twitch. I don't care if it's walking on the rail. I didn't need you walking on the rail, bro. I'm gonna, you just motivated me to stop walking on the rail again. Yeah. No, yeah, I didn't know anybody. I thought it was boring people. No, but, no, no, no. Man, no, because I've had, no, I, like I said, I really got a lot out of it because, like I said, you you have the same side paralysis I do on the left side. So I was trying to learn stuff. So I remember even asking you a question. It was like, how do you get that? How do you get that left leg to move? And you were telling me about how you just sort of throw your hip into it, which I try to think that every time I get out there and walk, but it hasn't worked for me yet because the therapist has to move my left leg for me to, to move. Yeah, you know, I think about it. I think just doing it, just kept kept trying and trying and trying and trying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean year after year. Can remember I've been a survivor and a driver for fourteen years. So yep. I I kept at it. I'm gonna keep at it again. Yeah, you gotta keep doing it because that's the key to that neuroplasticity of that repetition. So you gotta keep doing that. You don't want to. You don't want to lose anything you might have gained already by doing it. Now you mentioned something I want to come back to, and that's your your use of uh, visualization. Yes, and it's really important. So, do you find that to get get you? Uh, can you actually see it in your mind's in your mind's eye? 
Yes. So, yes. so you just so what I what I've learned, bro. If you can see it in your mind, you can actually do it. It takes time. Right. But that pie is a new philosophy. Yeah, that's the that's the next that's the next best. The visualization is the next best thing to actually getting out there and walking. Which, like I said, for me, the walking involves the therapist having to move my left leg for me. But and you know, like I said I only get that kind of therapy once a week. I used to pay another lady to walk me a couple times a week, but I'd have to do private pay and. I don't have the money to keep doing that, so so I so I can only get out there twice a week. But to getting out there and visualizing is the next best thing than, than actually doing it. So you know, but okay, we're gonna get down, get down to the end of the show. But I'm curious, what if you were to give advice out there? To, let's see that you do survey survivor who's having a hard time, he's been to hell. What advice would you give them as a new surgeon survivor? What would you tell them? I would tell them to keep working on getting better and never give up. Never give up. Never give right. up. Right. Stroke and shoot. That pounds a living way to way it is and makes you want to give up. It does. Yeah. Yeah, like and, I said, I know I will walk before I die. Yeah. And that is my attitude. That is mindset. That is yes. the thing that will make it happen, bro. I really believe that. Yeah. And then then once I'm able to walk, then I can move out of this uh, assisted living facility and move back home with my wife and my cats. And I got two cats at home that miss me. And then I'll concentrate more on getting my left arm back. But walking is number one priority. Well, I really appreciate your trying. I really appreciate you're a warrior, bro. You keep going. You yeah. Keep trying. I'm proud of you for that. Well, I want to thank you for being on my show. And I want to know, I'm going to be putting links to your Facebook page if somebody might want to reach out to you and, and talk to you. Yeah. But I want to I want to thank you for being here, bro. We're, we're, believe it or not, half an hour has ever went by for first. Yeah, show. yeah, I know. And I had a difficulty with my phone at first, but luckily I had, luckily I have an iPad also, and finally was able to get on the podcast here uh, bro, with my iPad. I really appreciate being there. I look forward to having you on the show again, on the podcast again. Yeah, check in their progress. Yeah, yeah I, I want to thank you for all the work you do on this stroke TV because I I love it. I love watching your content. Like I said, I want you to get back to walking again because I really enjoy watching that too. Bill, I you've got you know after talking to you, bro. On assembly, I I have to. Yeah, I, no, you, yeah, you got you, to. You and the other stories I've been out there is a reason I do what they do. Yeah. And I'm the outside there was getting bored of it tired of it. And I I don't get out of, out of if I can help one person motivate. And if you great, I'm so happy, I feel honored to help you. Yeah, yeah, you do. Like I said, I enjoy watching you. Like I said, it helps me to watch you. Well, I'm gonna be working on getting a volunteer uh or thing going where every bubble opening a group that Stro TV Media represented volunteer representatives. So you better get more involved in what we do. But appreciate all the support, Bill. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Now, I guess because my likes, I got one more meeting, dude. But thank you for being that podcast, bro. Yeah. I, it's been my pleasure. All right. Yeah. Bye, Bill. And, and as soon as this is ready, let me know and I'll uh, I'll post it on my right. wall for some of my friends to watch. All right, well, thanks again, okay. Bill. Thank yeah, you. Have, have a good day. Set me on
Uh, there we go. Let me pick the screen. Hold on. I don't know why it changed. I have no idea. Hold on. It's it's uh it's a setting back out. Mix. There we go. All right. Well, that was Bill Wade. His uh story of his survival. But you know something I want to remind you of. A mistake I made early on in my stroke is I began to compare myself, my stroke, with other, other people's stroke. Don't do it. Every stroke is different. Every stroke is like a fingerprint. Every stroke of our all millions of millions of strokes of ours around the world. Every stroke is different. Everybody recovers, everybody rebuilds differently. But, you know, I want you to look at Bill's life and the battle he goes through. When you think you have a bad, when you think you have it the worst out of anybody, or you start, you start feeling down on yourself, remember there's another stroke survivor out there has it worse than you do, and that stroke survivor tends to be grateful and have a positive mindset. So what I'm telling you this morning, you can have positive you were the, and I, I put in the chat earlier, I'll say it this way. I put in the chat, in, in the chat earlier. You can't always, uh, you cannot control what has happened to us. We cannot. We cannot control we had a stroke. But what we can control is how we respond. Let me say it one more time. We can't control what happens to us. But we can control how we respond to what has happened to us. So my encouragement for you today is look, make sure you're responding with a more positive attitude. How could you be positive when something like stroke hits? Well, it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, but you look forward. You look forward to living life and living the best you can. You don't focus on what you can't do. You focus on what you can do. But I want to say thanks for tuning in for those that are out there. And there's Bill Wade. I see Bill Wade. I'm saying thank you. Hey, Bill, you know, it's really great to have you out there, Bill. I appreciate it. I've pre- you know how much you blessed me by being my podcast. Thank you. But I want to help everybody has a great day. And remember, victory is certain for those that don't stop trying. Victory is certain for those that don't stop trying. So guess what? Don't stop trying and don't give up on hope. Okay, everybody. Hope everybody has a great day. I'll play you out of one more time. Appreciate it. But love you guys. Hope you have a good love energy way. Bye. <laughs>